Hi, this is Professor Cummings, and I wanted to do a problem here, an, an initial value problem. I produced a short that kind of went through the steps. Now I want to do a full video on it. And this is a problem, even though this is going to be in my calculus and differential equations playlist, this is a problem from a kinematics and dynamics uh, textbook that I, when I teach that class. And we can go through this problem, and I'll walk you through, you know, how it's an initial value problem. All right, so the car on the left in the photo in figure 12-2 uh, moves in a straight line such that for a short time its velocity is defined by 3 squared plus 2t in feet per second. So that's the function that describes the velocity. Where t is in seconds, determine the position and the acceleration when the time is 3 seconds. Now, when the time is 0 seconds, the displacement is 0 seconds. So here they have the S's for displacement, you know, acceleration and velocity of the vehicle. All right. So again, so when, at the beginning of time, when they start the, the stopwatch, you're at a displacement of 0. All right. So find the acceleration and the position at 3 seconds. Um, they give you an initial value. That's S equals 0 at time 0. So that's what that uh, this little statement actually means. So that's what that statement actually means. So that is the initial value. Well, that's the whole point of this, this whole video. That's the initial value. Now there are some other relationships that I want you to be mindful of. Here you've got the acceleration and the velocity of position and their relationship with each other. The acceleration is the derivative of velocity with respect to time. Displacement is the antiderivative of velocity with respect to time. And the velocity is the derivative of the displacement with respect to time. And then velocity is also the antiderivative of the acceleration with respect to time. So we're going to use all of these relationships together as we go through this problem, you know, and you know, as we solve the initial value, or solve it as an initial value problem. So let's first look at the displacement, you know, and we're going to look at the displacement and the function that we're going to start off with is the function for the velocity. We're going to use that relationship with displacement velocity where, you know, there is a derivative of one of the other. So velocity is the derivative of displacement with respect to time. And when you're dealing with an initial value problem, the first thing you do is you take the antiderivative. So displacement is the antiderivative of the velocity. And since the velocity was given to us as a function, we're just going to take the antiderivative of this function of 3t squared plus 2t with respect to time. And here that's the, you know, the sum of the derivatives equal to the derivatives of the sum. And what you end up with is t cubed plus t squared plus c. The c is the constant of integration. And when you see a problem or a function written this way, that is called a general solution. So that was the first step. Take the antiderivative of the function. Now we've got an initial condition or an initial value uh, when the displacement or assume when the time is zero, the displacement is zero. So that's your starting point, right? So an initial value of the position is zero when the time is equal to zero. So what we do is go to the second step. We make that substitution for the initial condition. So we take that function, the displacement function, and for time zero, we have displacement of zero. And that leaves us with nothing but our constant of integration is equal to zero. So a very simple, you know, initial value um, and how this is going to turn out. Now, to go to the third step, we substitute that constant of integration and that gets us the particular solution. Go see the general solution is a family of solutions. Once you've gotten that constant of integration, you've got a, a particular solution. So that's the whole point of an initial value problem. So now we've got the displacement is another function, which is equal to t cubed plus t squared. The c is 0. And at 3 seconds, the displacement 
is 36 feet. So that is part of the initial value problem. Now that is the initial value portion of the problem, but I want to finish this problem out. So that is the function for the displacement. So now let's move forward with the for the acceleration. So again, we take that function, we take its uh, the, the derivative for the acceleration, and again the sum of the derivatives is equal to the derivatives of the sum. So we end up with using the power rule. We end up with the acceleration as a function of 6t plus 2. We didn't need the initial value for that. We didn't need the initial value for that one. We just needed that one for that constant of integration. So that is, so we have a function for the acceleration, the velocity, and the displacement. And we can find out what everything is at 3 seconds. Now, you, since these are functions, you can also find these at a variety of different uh, points in time. So and you could take that same function and we can make a chart of it. So we got the time and I took it out to 10 seconds and I can look at what the position would be at any point in time, the velocity at any point in time, and the acceleration at any point in time. You can even graph it. So that is our initial value problem. I wanted to do one of these, you know, online just so people could see it. It's more than just a calculus problem. It is an overall engineering problem. So if this was helpful to you, go ahead and uh, like, you can comment and subscribe. I'll probably put this in a couple of different playlists, but definitely in the calculus and differential equations playlists on the channel. And I will talk to you next time.